Hello, my name is Yue Liu. Today we are going to talk about local perturbation analysis. So local perturbation analysis is a technique first developed by Grayson in her PhD thesis. The purpose is to analyze the stability behavior of a slow, fast reaction diffusion PDE system. For simplicity, let us consider a two-component fast-slow reaction diffusion system here. U is the slow diffusing variable, and V is a fast diffusing variable. DU and DV are their respective diffusion coefficients. It is quite straightforward to generalize this method for systems with more than two components. Let us consider an initial condition where we start at a homogeneous steady state with V equal to a constant global value and, v, and U equal to another constant global value UG. We want to know what happens if we put in a localized spike like this. Our localized spike has height UL and is considered infinitesimally thin. For LPA, we assume that the fast diffusing quantities, that is V in our case, diffuse infinitely fast, and the slow diffusing quantities, that is U, does not diffuse at all. Which means that in LPA, we take the limit of DU going to zero and DV going to infinity. Equivalently, since uh, if we d define delta as du over dv, we can say that we are letting delta goes to zero. In essence, LPA is a zeroth order approximation in delta. So our recipe of transforming the PDE here to the LPA system as follows. Since the fast diffusing variable V diffuses infinitely fast, it is always spatially homogeneous. So we can get rid of the diffusion term here and represent V with a OD variable that depends only on time. Next, for the slow diffusing variable U, since the global quantity is spatially homogeneous, we can also get rid of the diffusion term and represent it with another OD variable, UG. Finally, we use a, another variable, UL, that track the height of the spike. Since we assume that the spike is infinitely thin, the UL, the spike, does not affect global dynamics, which is why in the top two global equations, UL does not appear. Bifurcation diagrams with respect to UL will consist of global branches with UL equal to UG, which corresponds to no patterning, and additional local branches, which in uh, corresponds to some sort of patterns. So for example, let us consider the wave pinning model with source and sink terms. The model is originally proposed by Mori et al. in 2008, and the additional terms are proposed by Versturin and Chapnese in 2017. Here, as before, U is our slow diffusing variable V is our fast diffusing variable. This F is a reaction term here. And we are going to use this parameter delta as our bifurc main bifurcation parameter. So let us follow the recipe and transform the PDE into the LPA system, which is here. Notice that the LPA system contains the wealth mixed system as a subsystem. 
the black equations here, which means LPA can tell us everything the well-mixed system can tell us. We can easily produce bifurcation diagrams for this system with auto. And here is the result. The diagram on the left is a bifurcation diagram for the well-mixed system and the, on the right for the LPA system. So this diagram uh, follows auto style convention, which means the red lines are stable branches of equi equilibrium. The black lines here are unstable branches of equilibrium. The green and blue are stable and unstable periodic solutions. Notice that everything in the well-missed diagram here appears also in the LPA diagram. That is, this branch of equilibria, the two half bifurcations, and this limit cycle. However, their stability can change in LPA. So here I label uh, the distinction between global branch and local branch. If the system is attracted to a local branch, that means UL equals UG, and the spike decays back to the homogeneous state, and nothing interesting happens. If the system is attracted to a, to a local branch, then UL does not equal to UG, and we can have interesting patterns to form. For this example, we can, dis uh, we can observe four distinct regimes. In regime 1, that is a regime with the lowest gamma value, we observe only one stable global branch of equilibria. This means no pattern is possible in this regime since all spikes would decay back to the homogeneous state. Regime 2 is interesting. We call this regime the polarizable regime. Because in this regime, the global branch is still stable, however, it coexists with a stable local branch. This means a strong enough localized perturbation can push the system away from the global branch into the local branch and lead to pattern formation. And in fact, the location of this unstable branch here determines the threshold for when that will happen. Regime 3 and 4, uh, in these two regimes, the global branch is unstable here. And we have either a stable local branch of equilibria, like in regime 3, or a stable limit cycle, as in regime 4. In these regimes, in a, an infinitesimal perturbation can lead to pattern formation. It can be shown that this, this, kind, this kind of regime corresponds to what is known as a Turing unstable regime, which we will talk about next. T uh, another interesting fact is that for this system, it turns out that regime 3 and 4 lead to the same pattern in the full PDE. So now let us compare LPA with linear stability analysis, also known as Turing analysis. So Turing analysis answers a slightly different question. What happens to a homogeneous steady state if we add infinitesimal noise to it? So to remind you, in LPA, we start at a homogeneous steady state with U and V exactly at their steady state and an infinitesimally thin uh, spike is added somewhere in the domain. This spike can have a finite height. However, in Turing analysis, we start near a homogeneous steady state and we add in a global infinitesimal noise to it. Let us, let us compare the results of these two different analyses. 
So with Turing analysis, we can compute this blue curve. This is a bifurcation diagram with respect to delta. That is this parameter here, the ratio of the diffusion coefficients, and gamma, which is the bifurcation parameter we used earlier. So above this blue curve, the system is Turing unstable. Uh, and below it, it is Turing stable. Turing unstable means uh, an infinitesimal noise is sufficient to lead to pattern formation, and Turing stable means the opposite. So here we, we can observe that the LPA diagram uh, earlier co corresponds to the vertical axis of our new diagram. So for example, the regime one here, we can label the regime boundary on our new diagram. Um, it can be shown that, that uh, LPA st unstable regimes are the exact same thing as Turing unstable regimes. However, notice that Turing analysis cannot not distinguish between regime one and two. It also does not distinguish between regime three and four. So let us talk about the advantages and disadvantages of LPA. It is easier to analyze bifurcation behaviors of the LPA system, which is an ODE, than the full PDE. LPA can detect instabilities that require sufficiently large perturbations, whereas Turing analysis is concerned only with infinitesimal perturbations. LPA cannot predict which exact pattern would form. We need to simulate the full PDE in order to, to find out. LPA can identify bifurcations that are not really present in the full PDE. In our example, that is the distinction between regimes three and four, they look very different on the LPA diagram, but for the full PDE, they produce the same type of solutions. LPA is valid only in the limit of du going to zero and dv going to infinity. Turing analysis does not have this restriction. However, in this limit, LPA can tell us everything Turing analysis can. And in fact, there is a paper by Holmes in 2014 that relates the matrices produced by LPA and Turing analysis and discuss how their eigenvalues are related. And here are some uh, further readings if you are interested. Thank you.